Sister, I want to thank you for serving our country. Tell us how you uh, you uh, served our country. Uh, your retired U.S. Army colonel. Uh, when did you start the the the, uh, the the service, and when did you retire? Okay. Well, I I joined as a medical student. I'm one of eight kids. Dad and mom, very wonderful parents, wanted to give us two things: our faith and our education. No matter how how much education we were <laughs> achieving, um, they dad wanted to take care of that. Now my father was a thoracic surgeon, so great role model. Mom and dad were daily mass goers, daily, as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one of eight kids, and uh, so so I wanted to do something for my part to help pay the the tuition. I went to Georgetown. I was accepted to Georgetown. In those days, the Georgetown was always more expensive than the average school, but in those days it was only eight thousand, hmm. and then it bumped up to all the way to fifteen thousand. But the so I originally signed up, not really for altruistic reasons, but it was you know it wasn't anything that I was against. They were offering, and I accepted. And my parent, my father, and said, "You don't have to do this," but I I said I wanted to. So that's how I ended up into it, and I initially did family medicine residency and served our, our country in far off places like Korea and, and the Sinai Peninsula initially to get a flavor of missionary work because I'd been discerning religious life since I was a little one. Wow. And um, after that, I, I did some missionary work and discerned more and wanted to follow my heart, which was surgery. So I went back to do a general surgical residency, finished at Georgetown in 97, and little did I realize I was still in the military, I was in an active reservist. So I, but I kept getting all these letters from the army that I didn't even open, I just threw them away. Cause I said, oh, I'm not gonna be staying in because I'm, I wanna go into religious life, God's called me this. <laughs> but then in 2000, and I still hadn't found a community that I felt was something, you know, cause religious life is like married life. You have to, you know, you wanna get married, you have to find the right, you know, man. <laughs> exactly. So I just, um, it was about a two year span between 2000 and 2002 that I, and I had completely um, let, try to let go of our Lord, you know, let go of my own will. And in those two years, I did a lot of overseas missionary work with the Catholic Medical Mission Board, you know, going to uh, Kenya a lot to the, to the um, St. Lucia and uh, Haiti, places like that. And then um, after 2000, uh, well, I, I met the little workers of the Sacred Hearts via a priest who was a um, retired, well, he, he had, was in Vietnam. Beautiful Sister, priest. Sister Didi, hang on. Sister, Sister we got to take a quick break. I hear the music. I want to hear, and I know our listeners want to hear about that vocation to becoming a bride of Christ as a medical doctor. And, a, and, and in the Army. Great story. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. We're too blessed to be stressed. We're too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be billionaires. Stay with us, family. We've got Sister Dee Dee Byrne, one of the most fascinating nuns in my lifetime. <laughs> Sister Dee Dee, you're, you're telling us about your the way uh, you went for the military. You met the the order that you're presently with right now. Can you continue sharing with the audience uh, this fascinating journey of faith that you've been through? Well, I, as I mentioned, um, I met a priest who introduced me to the sisters, and it, it was not even anything that I would be looking for. They were little Italian sisters that were school teachers. And I didn't realize that they were um, also did other things. And we discovered as I got to know them better, it was basically when I had kind of completely emptied myself to what my will was and opened it up to God's will. And I, I, during those two years, I mentioned I was away a lot overseas. And so I was spending about five months in Kenya. I was along the, the northern border between um, Kenya and Sudan in the Kakoma area working. I was the only doctor there. And I, so I had a lot of time. A, a priest had given, allowed me to have adoration every day. I spent hours before the Blessed Sacrament. Wow. It was there that I finally said, okay, Lord, um, whatever you want. I, I thought you want me to go, go into religious life, but if you just want me to be a lay missionary, you know, so be it, whatever you want. Um, but cause I had just mentioned before 
I had um, uh, met a few medical communities, uh, but they were very liberal in their ideology. They were, uh, um, you know, they didn't have any qualms about giving out birth control pills and oh. things like that. And I had met with, you know, Cardinal Hickey, to go back a little bit, Cardinal Hickey was our Cardinal here in Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. And I was a chief resident in the cardiac surgery service. And he was my patient. I scrubbed in on his open heart surgery, held his pulsatile heart, managed him post-operatively for the nine days he was there. And we became very close. And it didn't hurt that my youngest brother, who Jesse <laughs> met, was a priest in the diocese at that time. And uh, so we had this extra little bond and he helped, he helped me through, you know, it was basically a spiritual friend for me. And he basically said, these sisters are um, sisters who are feminists in their ideology. And so I just felt that God was calling me to help kind of promote the medical aspect of a religious order that was Christ centered and Eucharistic, very much Eucharistically centered that were traditional and the little workers of the sacred hearts were over 130 years old, our founder's been beatified. He's from Southern Italy. He was beatified at, um, and given, you know, because of his, just his uh, faithfulness as a holy priest. And then we have a foundress, she's incorrupt and she's venerable. And wow. so we have a kind of two double headers. They're awesome. watching over us. Awesome. And our sisters are pretty much the same worldwide. So, you know, in India, Albania, Argentina, and here in the USA and Italy. So that we're not real big, we're about 400, you know, mm -hmm. in um, the numbers, but we're very faithful. And so I was really attracted to that. So, you know, the other thing I say about the little workers is that they were uh, so little and so humble that when the Vatican II hurricane blew over, all they felt was a little breeze on their head. Awesome. Because, because <laughs> when they were told, to modify the habit, all they did was just remove a little red stripe on the black habit that you, you know, you saw the black habit I wore at the RNC. Yeah, it's beautiful. And um, so that's our, our, our habit. I'm wearing kind of a junkie habit right now because I was running around, but um, kind of a work habit, but that's our official habit. And all they did was remove a little red stripe. And then they said, that's our modification. And then a very, you know, uh, firm Calabrese, Southern Italian, uh, headstrong way so we're not going to budge i love it that was, yeah that was that was very reassuring to me uh you but i can see what what brought you to that order the orthodoxy of the order